Hey, hold on, folks. Don't go ahead and push nothing. Don't skip forward or nothing like that. I'm going to tell you how to pronounce this. This is called a what? Paella. Hey, with that being said, I got CJ, and we finna show you how to make it. Let's get it. Let's go. Okay, so look, you guys got a chance to look at a little bit of that B-roll, you know what I mean, other ingredients. Listen, we're not trying to bore you, right? But listen, I just really kind of like come on the train lately to this. And again, this is the right pronunciation of what? The paella. The paella. You know what I mean? Uh, so listen, it starts off like how we normally get down, right? You know what I mean? We all used to putting uh, butter, uh, olive oil. Of course, I'm using the, uh, the branch and vine. You know what I mean? Uh, listen, they infuse olive oil. And then I exchange this one out. This one right here for me, this is the one with the scallion. If you guys are not using this, this kind of like levels it up. Now, to give you guys a little bit of the uh, information on this uh, dish right here, this is like a Spanish type of dish, right? Mm -hmm. But you know me, I try to keep everything and do everything simple. Hey, one of the things they don't know about you, especially you being on this channel, right. is that you do the exact same thing. Oh, exactly, man. Yeah. I keep it simple, keep it fresh, right. and make it so it's attainable and easy to do. And that's why we're doing this on a, a, a home kind of pan instead of like the specialized paella pan that you can get. And listen, one of the things I want to tell you guys is, uh, listen, I got to talk to the food police. You had some of the keyboard. The keyboard commandos. The key keyboard commando. <laughs> Look, this is like a, a, a famous dish. You know what I mean? But look, I'm going to go ahead and chop it up and do it my way. You know me. I like to do everything and I like to level it up. And speaking of level up, I'm going to be seasoning my seafood with my A seasoning. You know, this right here goes great with sea seafood. I'll just put that right here. You guys will see it again. Okay, so look, I think we uh, we good now. Yeah. Oh, you you know what? One of the things I like, man, you can smell it. When it becomes fragrant, you can look at it, see the shimmers, yeah. and then it goes. Well, let's add a little bit more uh, flavor at this. Oh, yeah, hear that oh, sizzle. Yeah. We got our onions, got our bell peppers, nice and diced. All right, gonna mix. I'm gonna go in here and give it a give it a little whirl, get everything coated. That scallion infused olive oil, that right there is the way to go. Now you can go with scallion infused, uh, garlic infused, basil, rosemary, any of those will work great with this type of a dish. Yes, sir. And look, I like the colors too. So what I'm gonna do now is just move this around. I want to get, you know, as much surface contact, you know, on the veggies to get some heat and then get them going. All right, why don't we add a little sprinkle of that level up, get that salt in there. Again, I told y'all, y'all was going to be able to see that. Yeah, again. yeah. Right? Hey, we, look, we, want our, we want our dish to taste good. <laughs> right, right, right. So look, I know why we're doing this. Just to like level it up and, you know, a little bit of the seasoning, the salt will pull some out. But don't forget, this is like low in sodium. So I'm going to ask you, let's give it a pinch of, uh, you know, that kosher salt over there. Hey, so look, what I'm seeing is right now, they starting to get nice and, you know, softened. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want to see them so translucent that we lose our vibrant color. Because right. one thing about this dish, I like to see the colors. Oh, yeah, you know what sure. I mean? It's all about the presentation. So anytime you're ready, you can go ahead and add yours. Am I allowed to do it? Hey, go on, man. We I'm got gonna, it. Hey, <laughs> hey, just go, hey, don't, don't make no, hey, just go ahead and do it, bro. Just, 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 just rip it. the band in off. Yeah, just go ahead and do it. I got three cloves of garlic in here. And I get to use AB's fancy you know, my press, huh? Yeah, little right. press. All right, y'all, we're gonna go in with the chorizo, okay? This is Mexican chorizo, not Spanish chorizo, all right? Hey, Again, you, the yeah. keyboard commandos. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you said that. This is not authentic. This is, this is us. This is the way we do it. Too. Look, I gotta say this too. Please give it a try. What you want to look at right now, you want to make sure that you, everything is completely cooked, right? When you're cooking with chorizo, you just want to make sure that it's fully, fully cooked. You know what I mean? So I just put it in there and it doesn't cook like ground beef. You know what? But I can tell you this, it's like a flavor train of, uh, of uh, seasoning and flavored meat. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just incredible. All right, y'all. So while he's working on that and finishing it up, we're going to talk about the rice. This right here, this yellow rice is the cheat code. All right, it is not traditional, but it's the way we roll on this one. Traditional paella comes, with, you know, using a boreal rice with saffron, and it takes a lot of time, and we don't have the time. We're gonna make it so it's easy for everybody. Not only, not only that, it's just the fact that on this channel list, I try to use ingredients that you know, everybody can get. Widely, everybody can you know, get this. Listen, they're widely yeah. ava available throughout. Whether you live out in the woods or you live in this concrete jungle, you know what I mean. You can get these ingredients. Guys, we're gonna start getting the rice in here. We gotta get it toasted up real nice. Now, I want you guys to pay attention. Listen, when you say toast, we want it to be down on the bottom down there. You wanna toast it. And then you remember all of the grease and everything that comes from the, I don't wanna really call it that, but that's what it is. You know, when you start thinking <laughs> about the flavor, 
You know what I mean? Uh, the flavor, look at how the rice turns a different color. You know what I mean? Because uh, it's absorbing all of the flavor, you know, from our mixture that we had in here already. This is what I mean when I say we build in layers on top of layers on top of layers. All right, time to add a little smoked paprika in there. Don't forget a couple more pinches of salt. I'm gonna say hold up right there, because you know what I'm gonna advocate for? The fact that, you know, I develop low sodium products, you know what I mean? Uh, when it comes to the salt, anybody wanna add any extra salt, let them add that on their own. Time to go in with about a half a cup of white wine. Right, and then for those of you guys that don't do the wine, you know, you can always just add just a little bit more of, you know, your chicken broth or a stock if that's what you're using. And don't forget, whenever you're cooking with any type of wines or beers, you just wanna let it cook a little bit to cook that taste out of there, but it leaves a unique flavor in there. That's why we add it. The rice is pretty much finished up. AB's gonna spread it out in a nice layer on the bottom. Nice and smooth like. Right, explain that part about it again. You know, I just know that I do it, but I like the way you explain yeah. that. All right, so once we get this, uh, chicken stock in here, we are not gonna touch this anymore. We're not gonna move and groove this rice, nothing like that. It is going to toast up from the bottom, and that is the most coveted part of the paella. It's called the socrate, all right? That nice toasty bit on the bottom, it just makes, uh, makes the dish what it is. So we're gonna get the chicken stock in here, okay? And we just wanna go just above the rice. We have our lump crab meat right now. It is obviously already cooked, but we're gonna start putting it in with the chicken stock, and this is gonna kind of help it make it. That gives it that like, like, like we had the, the seafood right, the stock. Seafood stock. Yeah. Right, 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 right. A lot of people are kind of averse to seafood stock, so this is our way of getting around it. So look, notice what I'm doing right here. Instead of just leaving it right there on the top, I'm kind of like just pushing this down. Don't worry about our liquid. You know why? Because of this, we're gonna cook that. The rice is gonna like swell up. It's gonna get bigger. It's gonna absorb that all of that flavor along with this, you know, this crab taste. You know what I mean? No, so it's a method to the madness. You guys gonna understand why, especially if you've been following me for a minute. You know, I'm all into the beautification of the dishes, right? I like that, beautification. Beautification. Okay, so look, I want you guys to pay attention to this part right here. This part right here is really up to you. Listen, I got a big pan that you normally make this in, but it's super, super big and it requires you to use like several different burners on your stove. This pan over here is not as big. So listen, this is where we want to get in and decorate, right? So I'm gonna grab this here. and We're gonna do something like yin and yang, right? So I'm gonna put this in here like this. So I'm gonna bring this one in, bring it in like this. Let's go ahead and get these shrimps in. Again, you're pressing them down, and you want them to go uniformly all the way around, facing the same way. All right, so listen, once you got everything arranged the way you wanted to arrange it, with all the liquid on the side right now, you just want to let it, you know, continue to help all of your, you know, your fleshy, you know, seafood cook, right? So listen, when all of that's done, I could suggest you guys go ahead and hit it with a temp to make sure that even your lobster, your scallops, and your shrimp is at least 145. With that being said, we finna get out of the way and let it cook, folks. Okay, so check it out. If you guys come in here and take a look at this right here, you can see everything is cooked off. We hit it with the temp. We got up to about 150. You know, it kind of like rises, so it'll go ahead and finish from there, right? I let it cool just a little bit. You know, when he got a plate, I'm not finna over talk it. We finna go down here and get us some of this. Look, it's nice, thick. Oh man, look at that right there. You know what I mean? So then we'll just come. I'll take this and just pull it off like that. Yeah, look at that. And there's an example of that nice toasted bottom, that coveted so crate. This is the best bite on this pie right now. All right, it's time to take a bite. Let's go. Cheers, y'all. I'm telling you, that's just, that is too good right there. Okay, folks, look, we really ready to tear into this. There's some other people behind the camera, they ready to eat too. Listen, I'm not finna over talk it. You guys can see CJ's information right underneath him right there. You guys go by and check him out. Listen, 
The dude cook just like I do. Hey, with that being said, listen, if you're new to my channel, let me just take the time to say, hey, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and tell everybody out there, there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and making this stuff like this right here. And guess what, folks? Me and CJ, we out. Peace. Peace.